Gents, I just want to pause the episode for a moment to let you know about the Strong Men of Value Academy. You will have heard me refer to it a number of times and I want to bring more attention to it. So this isn't just a program. It's a life-changing environment and community of men who are focused on personal and professional growth. We're looking at areas of relationships, wealth and health, things to help you thrive and maximize your life. Imagine having bi-monthly one-on-one coaching sessions with myself, weekly group coaching calls, and an incredible brotherhood of high achievers by your side. Now we're diving into resilience, leadership, and holistic growth to not just succeed in your career, but to thrive in your health and your relationships. Your journey to greatness, it starts here. So join the movement and you can apply for the Strong Men of Value Academy. You can head to the man that can project.com to find out more. The Man That Can Project podcast, a podcast empowering career-driven men to live more fulfilling lives. We are here to challenge your beliefs, redefine success, and talk about the important stuff in a relatable way. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. My name's Lockie Stewart. Let's get into it. Episode 413 of the Man That Can Project podcast. I'm your host, Lockie Stewart, and Thank you guys for tuning back in. I, I really, really appreciate the continued support, feedback, reviews. It all means a lot. Now, today we're going to be talking about how to maximize your day. This is game changing and this will require you to take some time to think, reflect, prioritize, and implement. If you're not prepared to do that, this episode is probably not for you. Now, before we dive into the episode, I want to share two things with you, Ashley. I'm going to go off topic for a little bit. First one, Strong Men of Value Academy. We're kicking off a new game plan in two weeks, right? So it's the 17th of August today, or 18th when you're listening to it. And uh, we're kicking off a new intake for the 12 week. You can join at any point, but if you're ready to set a goal, build the plan to achieve that and deal with whatever comes up along the way. And generally, What we find pops up for people working towards goals, those who are growth-minded, the adversity pops up, right? And the things that you really need to work on, it can be self-esteem, network, certain skills that you need to learn in order to create the ideal life for yourself. That's what really comes up and that's what's exciting to work through. And obviously having the accountability of an incredible community from around the world of men who are striving for better. They're wanting to build their physical fitness and build their mental fitness got that out of the way you can check that out at the man that can project.com forward slash it's strong men of value so so i was just getting distracted there the second thing i just went for a walk with a mate and a lot of you can probably probably sorry relate to this i was extremely stressed today <clears throat> you know i had a few meetings pop up and then some uh i guess emergency not yeah emergency calls with clients pop up which threw my day out of whack. And I'm a very structured and routined person. And when things don't go to plan, sometimes I deal with it well. More often than not, I don't deal with it very well. And I become very anxious and overwhelmed and I sort of shut down a little bit. And today it was just like the perfect uh, thing happened. My mate reached out for the exact same reason. He was having a tough day, wanted to go for a chat. And part of me was like, I can't do that. I need to sit in the office <clears throat> and finish work. I've already spoken to enough people today, you know, of being about everyone else and I need to focus on myself. Not really being aware that focusing on myself is giving myself to step out of the office and actually just connect and be able to get all the shit off my chest and also listen and, you know, provide some, ad- not advice, but just perspective, really. And after the walk, I felt fresh i felt you know so much better than i did prior to going on the walk so there's a good little message in that that if you are feeling rubbish which is normal i i think our moods are like seasons that catching up with a mate and going for a walk can be one of the best things even if you aren't really feeling up to it and the little cherry on top had a little spontaneous beer now i don't drink beer during the week or alcohol for that matter and to do that was awesome and uh, feel a whole heap better. And you know, at the end of the day, the beer didn't kill me. So probably going to start recommending that at our workshops too. Go for a beer with your mates. No, nah. all in moderation though, I think. Anyway, let's get into the episode on how to maximize your day. So 
maximizing the day to me personally means making my time count. So what the time looks like and how I make that count is moving me towards what I want for my life. So progressing to the life I want, the satisfaction. And I've spoken about it a number number of times, sorry, on the podcast now that the things that are really driving me at the moment, or I guess around values is my health and that's mental and physical. So mental and physical fitness. The second one is freedom and what that looks like for me is financial one. So having the financial means to be able to take time off work, to be able to have the experiences that I want, to be able to travel, et cetera, but also the flexibility in that of time. So running my own business allows me to sort of dictate that to a degree. Um, And also with the academy being online, I do have the flexibility to work from various locations. Not that I do it because once again, I said earlier, I fucking love structure, which means my office is the place and that's what maximizing really means to me so i guess the first point is this when you think about maximizing your time what are you looking to achieve and one of the most important things and if you haven't done this you know i've done podcasts on it we have literally a step-by-step thing in the academy that runs through this but if you aren't if you haven't created a vision for yourself and i would say a vision is looking anywhere sort of five to 10 to 15 years plus into the future. But it's what you want your life to look like, who you want to be, who you want to be surrounded by, the things that you want to have, what you want to experience, right? That's what I would say is your vision because the vision is the direction. It's casting the net. And along the way, you need to grow, learn skills, meet people, et cetera, to make that happen. We then look at long-term goals, right? And that might be three to five years down the track. Okay, like where would you like to be in five years' time? Where would you like to be in three years' time? That's a longer term goal. And then we've got the goals for right now, right? And once again, working back for a lot of us in the academy, we use our 12-week game plan. And I haven't just plucked 12 weeks out of the out of the sky, as I've spoken about many times. The reason why I personally use 12 weeks, it's enough time to create momentum. It's enough time to take enough action to see results. But it's also not that huge amount of time that if you are going in the wrong direction or if you are not being as efficient or if you don't like what you're working towards, you can change it, right? You can tweak it. And um, part of that process is bringing me to point one here, which is having a weekly reflection and planning session. And we have it within our game plan. Every week, we do a weekly review and then we plan for the week ahead. We also do that for the month. We do a monthly review and plan for the month ahead because the game, (laughs) what's the quote? Failing to plan is planning to fail. And if you don't know what you should be doing, what's efficient or anything like that, or even where your time is going for that fact, how do you expect to improve it? How do you expect to maximize your day? It's not possible. right? So when you start thinking about your week in advance and you know what tasks you have, For example, some tasks you don't need to do every day. So uh, I guess one for me is the podcast. I don't podcast every day. But what I have slowly, and I'm still working on this, but slowly transitioning to do is doing one day a month where I do eight podcasts. I get the whole month's podcast done. That is the goal for me because then I don't have to keep putting on different hats. I can use the time throughout the the rest of the month to read, to learn, to hang out, to do various other things. So it sort of really brings me into chunking your time. And once again, in the academy, we have a cool module on this that you can go through a worksheet and actually practice chunking your time, which means putting similar tasks together. For example, if you're, I'm going to talk a lot of sales stuff because in a sales cycle at the moment. But I would put all my sales calls or calls or outbound calls together throughout the day. Then I would have my time. Then I might have content creation. Or for some people, it might be going to work. But also keep in mind, if you really want to maximize your day and think outside of the realm of work, but for your overall fulfillment, think about how are you chunking your time outside of work? What are your priorities? What is important for you to do? Is it spending time with family? Is it exercising? Is it you know, going for a surf? What is it that you want to do? And are you putting it in your calendar? Are you maximizing the time? Okay, so 
having a weekly reflection and planning your session is point one. Um, so I guess some questions as well that you could ask yourself, and it might be on a Sunday afternoon. I, fly, I you know, I go through sometimes Fridays or some day, some days Sunday afternoons, anywhere from ten to thirty minutes. But I ask myself similar questions like, okay, who did I not meet this week that I should have? You know, if I'm wanting to build my network, because you honestly, your network provides so much leverage in your life, and I have learned that over the last eight years. Thinking about things that you didn't achieve, what did you miss? What things should you tighten up? What could you improve? What don't you need to do again? Like, There's so many questions you can ask yourself and I'm sure you will work out which questions are going to best serve you, but that's how you really tighten up and maximize your time, okay? And you maximize your day. This uh, sort of touched on chunking your time, super important. And there is even a po- podcast on it about chunking your time uh, somewhere from 350 to 400. Go have a little look back through the catalog. The next thing is prioritizing your task. And there's a great book called The One Thing. I talk about it all the time as well Is what is the one thing that if that were to be the only thing you achieved today would have the most significant improvement in you maximizing your day or in you achieving or getting closer to your goal, right? Extremely important thing. So make sure you're prioritizing your tasks. Have your non-negotiables. My non-negotiables for myself personally is exercise. It is reading. It is checking our academy. You know, I love seeing what people are posting and getting involved in the discussions. It is working, obviously non-negotiable. Right? Their non-negotiable is time with my my wife. Okay, and just time to just sit and think. Sometimes it's ten minutes a day. Other times it might be an hour, an hour and a half. Okay. Another one, which is extremely important, take a fucking break. The story that I said at the start about me today being extremely stressed and wanting to catch up and then I was grateful that my mate, um, I guess, extended the opportunity for me to go for a walk with him. I wasn't going to take the break, but having that break changed the game for me. And Now I'm back in the office, I'm doing my podcast and I'm feeling so much better. But other things to consider why you should take a break is focus. Fatigue does set in. It's a real thing. So. By taking a break, and when I say a break, not every fucking 10 minutes and not a 30-minute break every 10 minutes. It's like, think about it. If you're walking, and I guess get to know yourself a bit better. There's so many recommendations around You know, every 50 minutes, every 40 minutes, every 20 minutes. Do what works for you and just take a three to five-minute break. Refresh. Don't take your phone or any technology, et cetera. Just go for a walk, stretch the legs, and then come back. Give yourself that mental break so then you can refocus. The next thing, and this is one of the most, actually, this is the most important thing. Eat, sleep, exercise, sunlight. Eat well. So I'm not just talking about portion sizes. I'm talking about eating to fuel your body to perform at its best. You know what foods make you feel certain ways. And if you don't, start taking notice over the next couple of weeks. Another thing is if you don't, Start learning about nutrition, right? It will have a game-changing effect on your mood, your vitality, your energy, all of the things that are going to help you maximize your day and improve your focus. The next one, sleep. If you're not prioritizing, you know, anywhere from, I I don't want to be the guy that says eight hours. I'd love to ideally get eight hours, but on average, I'm sort of probably 6.45 to 7.15. Anywhere from there, that's what I aim for. But anywhere from, let's just say, six to eight hours, the more the better. Right for your body, get to recover more. Make sure you have a good room temperature and eye mask. Um, you know, have your phones turned on. Do not disturb if you use it as an alarm clock. Uh, sleep is extremely important. If and if you're not sleeping well, start. You know, there's a great book called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. Start reading that and learning and getting some tips and tricks around what you can do to improve your sleep. Because when you're well rested, once again, your mood's better, your recovery is better, your body just feels better, okay? Exercise, move your fucking body. You want to build that physical fitness as we talk about all the time and we give everyone in the academy a fitness program because one, you need to be physically competent to achieve what you want in your life. If your body, you know, if you're not looking after your body, don't expect it to look after you. 
if you're ambitious and you're working towards things, you need to be able to deal with stress. You need to be able to be on the move. You need to have a healthy heart. You need to have healthy limbs and, and muscle and just strength and confidence in yourself. It's so bloody important. It's a, to me, it's just like it's a no fucking brain. If you don't look after your health, like you, you're not going to be someone that I spend a lot of time around. I'm very strict with who I spend time with and those who don't value their health you know, I necessarily won't spend much time. Actually, fuck, I won't spend time with. That's it. I want to be around people who value their health, value, put themselves first. Sunlight. Looking at sunlight first thing in the morning has been proven to help with your circadian rhythm, circadian rhythm, which is your sleep cycle, to help you get moving more, to help your body start waking up and doing what it should do first thing in the morning. So those four things are key. So let's Go back to these dot points, give you some actionable things that you can implement to maximize your day. One, having a weekly reflection and planning. Oh, sorry, the very first thing I was saying was vision, the long term goals, and current goals. If you haven't done that, done plenty of podcasts on that stuff. Also, in our academy, we have heaps of crap going on in there that you can, when I say crap, I mean absolute value that you can get around. The next one is having a weekly reflection and planning session so you can see where your time's going, what's important to you, what you need to get rid of, what you need to do more of, okay? Chunk your time. Next one is prioritize your tasks, limit your distractions, say no to unneeded tasks. Next step, take a break. It's okay to take a break. It's completely fine. Oh, actually, I missed one. This one's... A very important one. Plan each day the night before. So I've got a diary, right? So I use my 12-week game planner. And I've also got a daily greatness. Um, what is it? Daily greatness business planner. And <clears throat> I'm at my week out. So I've got all my appointments booked in. I've got everything like that. But at the top of the page, it says my most three important tasks to do today. I fill that out every morning. And I also just make sure uh, appointments haven't changed or anything like that. And then I fill out the rest of my day in regards to things that maybe, you know, I might want to read a little bit more. I might want to go sit in the sun. I might want to do whatever. And then I'll fill that in. So I've got a day laid out ahead of me. So at any point in the day, I know what I need to get done, right? Because having a plan eliminates the burden of choice. Definitely worthwhile checking into. And finally, guys, like I said, eat well, sleep well, move well, get some sun. If you found value from today's episode, make sure you share it. Every time you share it, get a bit of a buzz. But make sure you tag Lachlan Stewart on the Man That Can Project as well and do something today to be better for tomorrow. Thank you for listening to the Man That Can Project podcast. My name is Lockie Stewart and I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did, please take a moment to rate and review the Man That Can Project on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.